Hello there. You would have heard the term design thinking and wondering what design thinking is? In this video, we will discuss the concept of design thinking with a case study and discuss how it helps. So, stay tuned. We will take a simple case study as always. We will consider our favorite restaurant called the Vegan Gardens looking for an online home delivery service. James is the business analyst part of the consulting firm who is hired to set this up. Let us see how he uses the design thinking technique. James meets the restaurant owner Jane who has the idea for an online home delivery service. She starts off with a big list of requirements. We need a mobile app for both Android and iOS. We need an online web portal working with all the browsers and the list went on. Jane also told she had limited budget and wanted to reuse the profit from the home delivery service to make this app better. In a traditional manner, as a business analyst, James would just document the requirements in a detailed manner and prioritize them based on what Jane wants. Post building this, we may find out that the customers are not even using the features developed as it is not what they were looking for, resulting in a huge waste of the IT spend. Does this scenario sound familiar? I bet you would have worked on such requirements which were never used. Basically, we build and waste IT spend on the things nobody needs. Let us see how the use of the concept of design thinking will help to overcome this. Design thinking is a technique used widely in the user experience design and mainly keeps the customer at its center. It has been adopted by some of the world's leading brands for developing their products. It is a five-step process. Step 1. Empathize. Step 2. Define. Step 3. Ideate. Step 4. Prototype. And Step 5. Test. We will deep dive into each of them in the next slides and see how James uses it. Let us start off with step 1, empathize. James recommends Jane, the restaurant owner, that instead of starting off the IT development of the stated requirements, he requests her to arrange a few sessions with their regular customers to understand how this app would help them and what problem it solves for them. The first stage, as the name suggests, is to empathize. That is, to really understand from the customer's view what their problems are even before we think about the solution. We can use our requirement elicitation techniques like focus groups, interviews, observations for this stage. We have playlists covering these techniques. If you have not already checked it out, you can go ahead and check it out. We have included the links in the description below. Okay, coming back to our case study. James is going to use the interview technique. James has interview sessions with few of the customers and tries to understand whether there is a need for the online delivery and how it solves their problem. Customers explain that they come over to this restaurant as it is a healthy vegetarian option. Many a times they are not able to come all the way to the restaurant if their schedule is very hectic. Also, evening and weekends, the restaurant is quite far off from the place people stay and hence they are not able to make it all the way here. James asks whether they have tried the phone ordering. The customers inform that the phone takes way more time waiting and ordering and also their difficulty in explaining the location for the delivery and also the collection process. Instead. They want an online ordering system which helps them to place the order and make the delivery process easy. So this validates James' business need of an online home delivery system. Further discussions emphasize the ease of ordering with just a few clicks. They did not care about the web application at all. All they cared was the mobile app which they can use to order with few clicks on their mobile. This alone would save thousands of dollars on the IT spend on developing a web application. Also, another problem came out in the discussion 
was that usually they are so engrossed in work and it would be great if healthy food was delivered routinely for lunch without them needing to order every single day. This was a great pain point not even Jane was aware of as the subscriptions like this will be a great addition to the revenue and also solves a big problem for the customers. Speaking to the real customers gave a view of their real problems and without these conversations, we would have no clue what the real customers want. Following up with the exercise, James gathered further insights by sending an email survey to the restaurant's customers. One key finding was 65% of the restaurant's customers who responded to the survey were using an Android phone. With this step, James learned key information about the customers, their problems and their needs. Based on the learnings, we move to the next step, step 2, define. This step in design thinking process is for definition of the problem statement. James uses the insights gathered from step 1 based on interactions with the customers to define the problem statements. Unable to visit the restaurant for lunch during the busy workdays. Unable to order food for dinner or over the weekend as the restaurant is far off. Phone ordering system is not easy to use, time consuming and the whole delivery process is cumbersome that is guiding the delivery boy to their place over the phone. So caught up in work they don't remember to order and end up choosing the food at the cafeteria as they don't have time to wait. James defined these above mentioned problem statements and these will be used in next step in the process. Now we have problem statements clearly defined, we can move on to step 3, ideate. In this step, James will discuss with the team and come up with the solutions. James arranges brainstorming sessions with the key stakeholders from the restaurant to discuss the solutions to these problem statements. It was very clear from the problem statements that the customers need an online delivery system and it is very clear they don't want to use the current phone ordering process. They need this ordering and delivery process to be as simple and easy as possible with just few clicks on their mobile. It was clear the customers don't need a website and an app would do and 65% are Android users. Hence. James recommends that the solution can be to begin with an Android mobile app and then later can be expanded to iOS mobile app. Also, he recommended redirecting the customers to the mobile app if they click order online on their website. All the stakeholders agreed with the solution. There is no way James would have been able to persuade Jane and others if he did not have the insights from step 1. They all agreed and narrowed down the solution to begin with an Android app. Then James started discussing the problems related to messy phone ordering system and he suggested the online ordering to be very easy and convenient. Below were the solutions recommended by the stakeholders. Categorizing of food menu like breakfast, lunch and dinner. Categorization of food based on the types like salads, burgers, etc. for the ease of selecting for the customers. Location identification using phones, GPS so they don't have to type or guide the delivery person to their address which was a major pain point for the customers not ordering food. Payment integration with leading mobile wallets, mobile banking for ease of the customer payments. Another feature is to repeat the order as most of the people ordered the same combination over and over again. This one click reorder will save a huge chunk of time for the customers. Having a subscription lunch pack where the menu is hand picked by the chef and delivered every day to the customer during their lunch time. Which was another problem identified and it was a great idea and bunch of more ideas. At the end of the brainstorming session, Jane was happy with the ideas and asked James to immediately start development. James recommended that before we start development, we have two more key steps which will help to validate that these solutions are what the customers really want. From step 3, we have good solutions to problems reported by the customers. 
Before rushing to development, James moves on to step number 4, prototype. Prototype is a dummy model which shows how the solution would look like. James engages his user experience team and works with them for mock-up prototype for the mobile app with the discus solutions. Prototype need not be an actual working model. It just needs to be good enough to explain to the customer how the solution would be. It can be fancy screens or even diagrams drawn on paper which shows the customers how the solution would work. James got the basic screen mockups from the UX team and he created a storyboard which showed the basic flow of logging in, browsing, ordering, setting up the location, payment and order collection and also the subscription pack ordering. It was a series of screens and James can use the screens and the storyboard to explain the end-to-end -end process to the customers. Coming to the last step in the process, step 5, test. Based on prototype developed in step 4, the mock-up screens and storyboard showing the end-to-end -end navigation flow, James again meets the customers whom he had engaged earlier and shows them the prototype. They like the categorization, location setup using GPS, payment integration and also the ease of ordering just using few clicks. Few were not happy about the subscription model. They wanted flexibility to choose the menu or change if required and also cancel if they have other plans for that day. Also they absolutely love the reordering option which will allow them to reorder the item with a single click. Based on the feedback, it was evident that the solutions team has come up with a hit design with the target customers, which is a good confidence booster in terms of usage of the app and also improvements can be circled back to ideate stage and come up with revisions for the prototype and followed by testing again with the customer. There can be multiple iterations and once the customers are happy with the prototype, we can go ahead with the actual development of the mobile app, thus giving a validation that the developed solution is actually what the customer wants and it solves their problem. These features can be logged as epics and user stories to the product backlog and then can be delivered using the Agile methodology. We have a playlist covering the Agile methodology and I will be providing the link in the description if you want to check it out. Alternatively, one can still come up with BRD or FRD documents and develop the app using the waterfall model. It's a recap time. Design thinking is a powerful technique for customer-centric design and validating the solution is actually what the customer wants and it solves their problems. It is a five-step process. Step 1. Empathize. Understand the real problems of the end users or the customers. Step 2. Define. Define the problem statement clearly based on the insights from the customers. Step 3. Ideate. Once the problem statements are clearly defined, brainstorm for the best possible solutions. Step 4. Prototype. Once the solutions are identified, then go ahead and build a prototype. It can be as simple as a paper prototype or you can use UX screens and storyboards. Step 5. Test. Once you have the prototype, show it to the customers for their feedback on whether it actually solves their problem and this is what they want. Once the customers are happy, then go ahead and log the features as requirements and start with the development either using Agile or Waterfall. Did you enjoy the video? If so, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so. Also, click on the like button to show your support and also help us to share this video with your friends who may find this useful. See you in the next video.